in this final installment of my conversation with menopause specialist Dr. Tina Piers, we discuss the pros and cons of HRT. Um, irregular menstrual cycle, now we sort of touched on that at the beginning, whether yeah. uh, it's if you haven't had a period for a certain amount of time or you're just, you're, your bleeding has turned irregular, yes. whether you say bleed for a whole month or suddenly they stop and then they come yeah. back again. This can be one of the first signs of the, the what we call menstrual irregularity. Yeah. It can be one of the first signs that things are starting to go a bit wrong and that you're getting into the perimenopause. Yeah. So women, generally, their cycles become shorter. So instead of having a monthly bleed, they'll have a three-weekly bleed, something like that. Yeah. Their periods will become longer. So instead of having five days of bleeding, they might have seven or eight or nine or ten days of bleeding. Yeah. And generally, the blood loss increases and they have heavier periods. Right. So what a lovely combination. Mm. <laughs> More frequent, lasting longer and heavier. Mm. And this is a, a sure sign. Yeah, in itself, absolutely. Mm. And that's a sure sign that the, the hormones are not being regulated as well as they should be yeah. and that things are starting. And that is a time when women can start to have a little bit of HRT mm. to help. Um, and so they should go and speak to their doctor. Also, if they're having prolonged bleeding, which is very heavy and doesn't seem to have any pattern at all, obviously we need to exclude any pathology. Okay. So it's very important for them to be up to date with their smears, to go and consult with their GP. Maybe they'll have an ultrasound scan and yeah. see whether they've got any other condition that is adding or causing this bleeding. Yeah. So we mustn't ignore it. Just as women who are postmenopausal, if they have any unexpected bleeding, should go and have an ultrasound scan because there's a very tiny risk of endometrial cancer causing that bleed. Okay. So it's something that needs to be looked at and investigated. And, and many women who are about the, this sort of age might have a coil. So yes. bleeding might not be something that's on their radar anyway. Absolutely. They might, have a they might have an intrauterine device that's got a bit of hormone in it yeah. that has stopped their bleeding altogether. Um, in, those women are in a very happy position actually because they're getting contraception it's controlling their bleeding, and then when they have some symptoms, it's not going to mask the menopause, because they'll still have hot flushes and so on. When they get those symptoms, they can ask their doctor if they could have a little bit of Advac estrogen transdermally, a patch they change twice a week, or a bit of gel they put on every day, mm. just to top up their estrogen. The um, intrauterine device is taking care of all the other things, the, the lining of the uterus, it's the progesterone for the HRT. Mm. It's giving them the contraception and it's controlling their bleeding. So it's a fantastic position to be in. Would you actually recommend that women who are sort of, that they're starting their men perimenopausal journey uh, to perhaps consider having a coil and a patch rather than sort of going full on HRT? So well, it is HRT. HRT. It is HRT. It is HRT. But, you know what I mean. but that's a very good way of ticking quite a few boxes. Yeah. So if you're going to have problematic bleeding and you have an intrauterine device which is hormonal, mm. then that will sort that out for you. Yeah. But it's also going to give you contraception at a time when you know a lot of men at that age don't particularly want to use condoms and so on, so it's rather nice to have peace of mind from that yeah. point of view. Because you are still fertile. Absolutely you are still fertile. Mm. And the uh, eldest lady to conceive naturally was 59 years old or 58 years old. In the 1990s, we had a lady who wow. had a pregnancy in her yeah, late 50s. Wow. So, yes, you can still pick off an egg. <laughs> and some of my patients who have ultrasound scans, because they've had some bleeding, yeah. they know, on the scan they'll see there's a little egg ready to be released. Wow. Follicles are there, you okay. know, so we mustn't assume anything. Yeah. Well, and also there's the can as what happened in my case, it was that last minute sort of surge of hormones and everything else. Yes. That I fell pregnant. Yes. Which was lovely. Yeah, I asked your daughter. Yes. It was yes. great. Yes. And for me actually it was wonderful because I'd had to have fertility treatment to get pregnant with my first child. And so there was a gift. actually it was a gift. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, it was it was wonderful. Fantastic. Um mm. irregular pounding heartbeat, you you've you've sort of mentioned irritability, itchy skin, joint pain. Um uh, osteoporosis. Now, osteoporosis, we touched on when we were talking about the issue with, with breast cancer scares. Mm -hmm. um, is osteoporosis something that the risk increases during your menopausal years? Absolutely. So if we understand, it, I think it's important to understand how bone is built. Yeah. So there are some cells called osteoblasts, and their prime purpose in life is to make sure that if any of the skeleton looks a bit thin or a bit ropey, 
they divide themselves into two and make a bone cell and stick it in the area. It is incredible. They're little, like little macrophages creeping through our skeleton all the time. That's not so nice even while about. we're sleeping. <laughs> even when, no, I think it's clever. Things even creeping while we're sleeping. about in my body. Yeah, and they are, are, that's I'm going, mm. <laughs> they're doing a good maintenance job. So, but inside the osteoblast is an estrogen receptor. Mm -hmm. And when estrogen passes through the cell wall and sits on that receptor, it, the receptor sends a message to the nucleus so that that little cell knows what it needs to do and what its function is. So if there's estrogen on the receptor and this little osteoblast sees an area of bone that's a bit thin, it will know to divide, make a bone cell and stick it there. If it hasn't got estrogen on the receptor, yeah. it sees the area that's a bit ropey, but it doesn't divide and it doesn't make yeah. a bone cell, it just wanders on by. So this obviously then leads to osteoporosis. So thinning of the bones, osteopenia first of all, which is an early thinning of the bone, yeah. and then osteoporosis, proper osteoporosis. Now, if a woman goes on HRT for say three to five years, we should be able to create a 10% improvement in her bone by giving her those osteoblasts the right message yeah. from the estrogen. If a woman comes to HRT late, can it repair yes. any of the damage? Yes. So over three to five years, we would expect to see 10%, okay. in, up to 10% improvement in her bone okay. mass um, because she's now on HRT. And it doesn't matter if that's when she's older. Yeah. Now women can start HRT when they're older. Mm -hmm. um, preferentially, we'd go transdermal. Yeah. Okay. We have data to show that um, HRT in a woman in her 50s at the sort of appropriate time yeah. um, is very, very uh, beneficial to her cardiovascular system. Yeah. If you start it later, say in your 60s or 70s, it isn't as beneficial for your cardiovascular system, but it mm. will do no harm. Okay. It's not detrimental. Yeah. We just won't get such an uh, improvement in the risk of cardiovascular disease. So say there's... there's uh, a woman who is in her 70s, she's uh, gone through the menopause actually, she's come out the other side. Because um, I know there were, there were many women who, perhaps in the 80s, went on to mm. HRT, yeah. were told 10 years, maybe 15 years maximum, then have, then have come off it. So to them, they're thinking, well, I don't need it anymore. Mm -hmm. Is there any benefit for a woman in her 70s, mm -hmm. say, starting HRT? Well, the first thing we know is that if you're on HRT for 5, 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. the benefits of being on that HRT will last beyond you coming off it. Okay. And there's a Danish study that shows six years post finishing the HRT, okay. the women still had an improved health compared to the women who had been taking the placebo for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first thing. The second thing to say is that there's no arbitrary cutoff to the length of time a woman can stay on HRT. And if she would like to stay on it forever, then we encourage and support her to do that, unless there is some very compelling reason why she needs to come off it, such as active breast cancer. Yeah. And that really is probably the only real yeah. compelling reason yeah. for a woman to come off HRT, would be a hormone-based tumour. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, now I've forgotten what I was going to say. <laughs> Remind me. <laughs> that was symptom three. <laughs> which is memory loss and loss of concentration. <laughs> um, I, I was oh, so asking you about starting it later. Oh, starting it later, yes. So, so certainly the symptoms of the menopause can last uh, on average 12 years. Yeah. Or, and some women forever. Some women come in their 70s and mm. late 60s and are still getting the hot flashes and still can't sleep and still etc. etc. Yeah. And for those women, absolutely, it is okay for them to start on transdermal HRT. A low dose. Yeah. You only need a small dose to begin with and go very cautiously. But with the specialist care, they yeah. can definitely benefit hugely. As I say, it will, it won't, they won't get the full benefits of the cardiovascular yeah. system but they, it will do no harm, and that's the important thing. Obviously, osteoporosis is something that uh, we know affects the older generation sort of generally. Is HRT something that would be beneficial, never mind for the menopause, if you've, you've come clear, but you're, you, you're, you've been, because you can have obviously bone density tests to see Any whether time, you're yeah. um, becoming uh, more likely to have osteoporosis or you're in the throes of osteoporosis. Is HRT something that can be offered as, a, as yes. a medication? Yes, and the Osteoporotic Society has actually said that HRT is 
one of the most beneficial treatments for osteoporosis. Okay. Um, the um, biphosphonates, which are the other treatments that can be given yeah. for osteoporosis, can only be taken for three, five, seven years, and then right. they need to have a three, at least a three-year holiday because there are, can be some quite nasty side effects right. from those. And um, so, and sometimes, well, it has been shown that they create bulky, weak bone rather than nice, normal, healthy, okay. strong bone, whereas HRT creates strong, healthy, good bone. Um, I think we've pretty much covered everything, actually. We've not necessarily stuck to, you know, sort of A, a to Z of it all, but I think we've definitely, definitely mm. touched everything. There is one negative to HRT, okay? So it increases the risk of ovarian cancer by one extra case every 8,300 women on it per year. Now this isn't a lot, and the incidence of ovarian cancer is very low. It's only seven cases in 100,000 women um, in this country if they haven't been on the combined pill. If women have ever been on the combined pill, the incidence is three and a half women per 100,000. Okay. So it's a very low incidence, yeah. and it will increase it by one extra every 8,300. But yeah. many of the women that we, that I see, yeah. um, have had hysterectomies and their ovaries taken away, etc., etc. So, so that's, that's not, not even an issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if a woman has had a hysterectomy and can have oestrogen only HRT, we have data to show that that reduces her risk of breast cancer by 27%. So not only does it protect her from the osteoporosis, heart disease, etc., mm. etc., et but it actually reduces her risk mm. of breast cancer by 27%. Now, one of the things that I get asked really often is, you had a hysterectomy, so that must mean that you're not gonna go through the menopause. It's one of the biggest misconceptions, I think, that women have about a hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. Would you like to put people straight on what actually yes. happens to a woman when they have a hysterectomy? Okay, so there are, you can have just a, um, a total abdominal hysterectomy, which means the uterus is taken yeah. and the ovaries are left, in which case you will then carry on making some oestrogen. So let's say if a woman was in her 30s, premenopausally, she had a hysterectomy for whatever reason, then her ovaries would continue functioning. She'd probably have a slightly earlier menopause than she would have done had she not had the hysterectomy, yeah. um, but her ovaries are still functioning. Then some women will actually, for various medical reasons, have a hysterectomy and they'll have the ovaries removed as well. Now these women, we have to be very mindful of because they will go crashing into a mega menopause instantly. They wake up from the anaesthetic and they really need to be having a discussion with the surgeon and the gynecologist who's looking after them. So they start HRT immediately. Can um, you start HRT before you have your hysterectomy if you know that you're going to have absolutely everything removed so that there's more of a smooth transition? You could if you are perimenopausal already, but if you've already if you're you know you're going to be making oestrogen and have if you've got high levels of oestrogen the day of your operation, it's not going to add anything and okay. make you feel any different. But the important thing is when you wake up to be able to have some instantly straight away. Okay. Straight away. I see so many women who are sort of forgotten and they find that it's weeks or months before they are given their HRT and yet they have a miserable time. They in particular will have the cognitive malfunction yeah. and the misery. So they will feel miserable and tearful and, um, and, and not be able to think and, not be, and think they're going mad, they're going to a room and won't remember why they've gone in, yeah. uh, et cetera, et cetera. And for them that can be very, very alarming. Yeah. Mm. Why do you think it is that, that there isn't the information readily out there, but even for clinicians who are performing something like a hysterectomy, mm. aren't aware that a woman will literally need to come round and have HRT ready because they've, they've had their oestrogen source removed. Yes. Surely it makes sense that you yes. provide I think, something. I think things are improving. I think the problem was that in two, from 2002, um, until relatively recently, it had a very bad press. Yeah. And, uh, and that just sti stuck in everybody's minds. So the women didn't ask about it, and maybe there was a lack of education for some of the medical profession, but I think yeah. things are definitely improving massively. Mm -hmm. I think the pendulum is swinging, which is very, very exciting and very good at last. 
education is improving, knowledge is improving, information is improving, yeah. the conversations are being yeah, had, yeah. which is great. You know, they're, they're on the um, womenshealthconcern.org website, there's a whole load of press um, articles which have happened in on the radio, in the magazines and newspapers, yeah. specifically about HRT, and you can see there's a quite long list. Yeah. The, the conversation, you know, uh, Kirsty Walk and everything. Yes. More and more and more people, yourself, talking about it yeah. and improving everyone's knowledge and, and the information is great. Well, we hope that you have found this useful today. We will put all the information that we have spoken about in terms of website links uh, on the site as well. Thank you, Dr. Tina Piers, for speaking to us today uh, around your kitchen table. Kitchen tables play a very big part in This Girl is on Fire. Um, thank you for explaining everything so beautifully. It's my pleasure. Thank you. I'll have another cup of tea now. Okay. <laughs>